Hello, this is just a quick video because I've seen the question again on another forum and I figured I'll put it somewhere where I can link back to it in the future and answer that question again just by sharing the video. These are the four tools that I judge I will not sculpt without. Different kinds of clay, including monster clay or wed clay, which is a water-based clay. Um, I've also used this spatula for different things, including warbler for smoothing. It actually has Warbla on the handle. That's another tip for you. You can enhance the shape and comfort of your tools for and ergonomics with a bit of Warbla. I keep all my scraps. This was all scraps of Warbla. So a spatula is the first one. It's the most important. Um, I don't have autofocus on this. I'll try to stay at a, at a reasonable distance. So this is a spatula. It has what I call a flat spoon on one end, one end and a spear on the other. It's a bit dirty, I was just using it. So this is a super, super standard tool. You can find it anywhere they sell tools for sculpting. This is a number 24 or 23, I'm not remember, I'm not sure, but um, it was a gift from a fellow sculptor and I really appreciate it because it's more sturdy than, than, than the standard number 11 that you can find anywhere else. I'm not saying number 11 is bad, it's just that the blade tends to uh, loosen up too quick. This also happens when I carve wood with this, and yes, I carve wood with this sometimes for super fine details, but you just gotta retighten that, that tip a lot less because it's bigger, the grip is more sturdy, etc. A number 24 is what I recommend. If you can't find it, number 11 will do just fine. And those blades are also called number 11 in different companies, from Olfa to Excel to Exacto and other names. Number 11 is pretty standard. Then you got this spatula from, uh, this, uh, sorry, this uh, ribbon tool from uh, Kemper. I scraped it off earlier to try to find the number. It, I think it says 8R3, a Kemper 8R3. My favorite shape just died a few days ago. These tend to eventually loosen up, especially if you did like I did. I forgot this tool in my bucket of water. I don't usually leave them in water, but I was about to wash it after cleaning up and I forgot and I left the bucket on the counter. What happens, I think, is the, wo the wood swells up and the glue lets go. So I'll scrape that off to reveal the wood again. I'll score it to give a more of a mechanical grip. I'll try to scratch the inside of the metal as well for the same reason and I'll put more epoxy in there and link them up again. But these will eventually fail. They could last you years. This one lasted me at least six years of constant use although I've been using it a lot more in the last two years when I found out how useful it was. Uh, and this is a similar shape in a loop tool. Like, why would you need both? Because this is great for smoothing. Instead of shaving off with the small quantity of clay on the surface or digging a big sharp trench like these ribbon tools can do, you can remove and smooth at the same time. You can go like a little... If you press hard enough, you'll remove you'll peel off, but it's also because the, the wire is round and please keep those clean. This one started rusting recently, so I, I'm gonna have to attack it with some steel wool and dry it with some alcohol and maybe even oil it for a bit. So um, I wish these were stainless steel, but they're not. So um, yeah, a ribbon for smoothing. Saw that in a sculpting video a few years ago and I figured I needed one and I'm glad I got one. Now I want the same, but in full rounds. These are the angles I want the rounds. But yeah, just keep in mind that no, not many sculpting tools are designed to last forever, especially not in the hard wax type clays like monster clay hard or, you know, some super hard polymer clays and stuff like that. They're not made for that. Uh, they're made for potters. I still don't understand why they don't make them stronger considering they will be in water all the time. So <laughs> I don't get it. If somebody watching out there knows how to make these in full metal, like one piece, or a metal that has a mechanical grip for the tips to stay there forever, not rely on glue is what I mean, uh, all the better. I have broken these handles, at least three tools so far. I've been sculpting for 21 years. I've broken three of these. And we're talking brand names here. Kempers are the ones I broke mostly. Uh, more than three, actually, now that I think of it. Uh, one of them, I actually removed the wooden handle and replaced with a steel bar because, you know, I kind of had to because I was using it a lot at the time. So these are the tools that I would say 
I would not sculpt clay without. And you don't have to get these, but I'm telling you, if you do, they'll be essential for a long time. Then you grow organically, depending on what you need. You want to go bigger? Maybe you don't want to use a tool like this to remove ribbons or layers or thicknesses of clay. Maybe you want to move on to something a bit bigger like this. Even these will fail eventually. One of, one of mine actually broke uh, because I was using it for uh, carving a pumpkin. And they're not designed for that, of course. The rind is really tough on the bigger pumpkins. So one of them gave up. I had to buy another. So there you go. These are some just a few tips for uh, tools um, because, uh, you know, they're the foundation. And a lot of beginners are asking, where do you get your tools? What tools do you need to get? And there's so many tools out there. I say, don't be afraid to experiment. One of my favorite tools for smoothing clay, the surfaces especially make them even, not smooth, smooth, the final smooth, but more like scraping to the final level is a plastic card. I'm talking an expired gift card. They're the same quality as what you would get on a, on a credit card. Don't use your actual credit card, or if you do, scrape off the numbers. But these are, for me, better than the steel scrapers or the steel kidneys. For some reason, the firmness of them, the semi-flex of them, the edge of them is better for me than the steel scraper that I got. So you'll have to learn what you prefer as you uh, get new, new projects, new needs will re require new tools. And eventually you'll have a tool chest full of tools. I recommend getting yourself a tool chest just for the clay tools so that they, they're separate from other things, you don't lose them. Eventually you might get a second chest. The chest, if you get a good one, they're not a waste of money because you can stack them together in a corner somewhere or on a shelf, which is what I do now. And if you run out of space, get another tool chest. And if you decide to change your, uh, your trade, the tool chest can always be useful for something else. So um, these are all advice, pieces of advice I would have liked to know when I first started because I bought a ton of tools that I still don't use. You know, try them all. If a friend has other tools, borrow them for a bit if they don't need them. Uh, or go work in their workshop for a day and try to see what tools you prefer. Ask them what their favorites are. Trade tools if you have extras. Like if I'm in a shop and I see a really useful tool, so I'm starting to have a sense of what I will need. Recently, I found a manicure tool. Do I have it close? I do. Is that it? Nope, it's a different one. Sorry, I, I need to uh, clean up my work surface for the time being. I'm doing that today. And I can't see the actual one I have in mind. But it's a manicure tool that turns out to be a miniature version of this end of the spatula. It's a slightly more curved, but it's less than half the size of this. It's great for two sculptures I'm working on, including this, uh, this plaque behind me. Just to make the, the tiny, tiny leaves on it. It's a tree. I needed that small tool. So I got it from the drugstore in the manicure section. And I bought two because I figured a friend of mine would need it too. So I, I gave him a, a handle in enhancement with a scrap of warbler, like I did on mine, like I do on most of mine, where they don't already have a fat handle. Especially the miniature tools, they usually have a super, super fine handle. I need, I need a good grip. So I gave it to my friend, and it was a nice gift. And, you know, instead of him stealing my tools, he would never. <laughs> but he told me about a tradition in Europe, especially sculptors, Stone sculptures, sculptors, I think, somewhere in Europe. I forget which country he mentioned. The tradition is if you like a tool, you steal it, but you leave something of equal value. I'm like, don't do that to me. I would be pissed. Like, it's better if we just gift things to each other instead. So that's what I did. So uh, it's a good idea to, you know, gift your you know, fellow sculptors with uh, something you think, if you know them, of course, uh, something you think they will like and vice versa and everybody benefits. Thank you for watching and uh, happy sculpting.